What's up guys, Mike Thurston here, and today we're gonna to follow on from the top five quad dominant exercises, and we're gonna go on to the top five hamstring dominant exercises. Now, just a quick one. When it comes to the hamstrings, they deserve equal amount of attention when compared to the quads. The last thing you want is an imbalance of strength and size, you know, when you compare your anterior and your posterior chain. So, a lot of the time when most people do a lot of leg movements, they tend to be more quad dominant, so you need to ensure that you're giving equal amounts of attention to both, okay? So the first exercise we're gonna go for is the Romanian deadlift. You can do this with a barbell or a dumbbell. I'm doing it with a barbell in this video. The key things with this is you wanna ensure that you keep your shoulders back, your chest out, and you push your hips backwards, okay? So as you can see here, we pause. This is the lowest point in the movement which I'm gonna to go to. I'm pushing my hips back, and I'm fully lengthening my hamstrings, okay? Fully under tension. If I was to go any lower, I would move the tension away from my hamstrings onto my lower back, which is not the goal of this exercise, okay? So each individual is gonna be different. It's completely dependent upon their flexibility. Some people will be able to go much lower and still you know, have their hamstrings in that fully lengthened position. Whereas others, the range of motion is gonna be a little bit more restricted, so it's completely up to you how deep you go. Now the key thing with this movement is to initiate the movement by having the intention of thrusting forward at the hips, okay? If you think about pulling up, pulling the weight up to the top, it's more than likely you're gonna use your lower back to initiate the movement. So think about hips moving backwards and forwards instead of pulling the weight up and down, okay? Next exercise we're gonna move on to is the glute ham raise. Now this one, can be, probably should be performed in an actual glute ham raise machine, but the majority of gyms which I've been to just don't have it. So I will do this movement either on a lat pull down uh, machine or I will set it up using a barbell in a cage, which I'll show you in a later clip. So if you are gonna use this movement with a lat pull down machine, make sure you get a lat pull down machine with a proper sturdy pad, otherwise it's not gonna be very effective. So, as you can see, this is the bottom position of the movement, the glute ham raise using this you know, variation of doing it. Now, what I'm doing is I'm using a bar out in front of me to support me on the way down because there's no way in hell I'll be able to pull myself back up without any kind of support. You know, My hamstrings aren't strong enough, the majority of people's hamstrings are not gonna be strong enough. So what I'm doing, I'm locked in position, I'm trying to keep my torso in line with my thighs as much as possible and I'm slowly gonna lower myself down so I'm almost parallel to the ground and placing as much tension as possible on my hamstrings, trying to minimize it on my lower back. So the bottom position, I'm gonna slowly help myself up by using my upper body, my arms, and at the top, I'm gonna squeeze my hamstrings as much as possible. Then I'm gonna repeat and then go back down into the bottom position. Now, if for whatever reason you can't do it on the lat pull down machine or the pad's just not set right for you, then I would do this variation which is done in the cage where I use weights on the barbell, barbell's locked in position, I've got a pad for the back of my ankles and my knees are on a pillow. So like I said, same things apply but this time there's no bar to push me back up. As I slowly go down through the eccentric phase, I'm gonna try and do it as slowly as possible and then once I reach the bottom, I'm gonna lightly push off the ground and then squeeze and contract my hamstrings. And then when I get to the top, just hold that contraction temporarily. You don't wanna to spend too long at the top because there's no real resistance occurring there due to gravity. So once you're at the top, slowly go back down again. This kind of exercise is pretty demanding, so I usually get this out of the way uh, near the start of the workout when my hamstrings are fresh because they're pretty withered if I try and do this at the end. Now the next exercise I'll do is a variation of the good morning. I'll do it in the Smith machine. It's a very similar movement to the Romanian deadlift apart from this time the weight is on your back instead of the weight being out in front of you. I'll get myself set up in this position right here. Feet is usually underneath the bar. And what I'm doing is I'm ending up in a very similar position at the bottom movement as to the Romanian deadlift. The same things apply. I'm just really trying to push my ass out behind me as much as possible whilst keeping my spine straight. Don't allow any bending to occur in the spine, otherwise you just place too much tension there. The focus here is on the hamstrings. So again, I'm not thinking about 
pushing the weight up and down with my back. I'm trying to think about moving my hips backwards and forwards. So I'll slowly go through the eccentric phase. Once my hamstrings are fully under tension, I'm then gonna initiate the movement by contracting the hamstrings and thrusting my hips forward. Same things apply. I don't really wanna to spend too much time on the top of the movement because not much is happening here. As you can see here, I just kind of go through what position I get myself into. I push my lower back in and I'm pushing my hips backwards. You can see my spine there. That's what I'm aiming for. I do not want to bend forward and curve my upper back or lower back in any way. That's not what you want to do. Next exercise is obviously the lying hamstring curl. Big fan of this one. I think pretty much everyone should do this. The majority of gyms should have this machine. So don't skip it. What you want to do when doing this is to lock yourself into that bench. So at all times, I'm really thinking about thrusting my hips into the bench. If you allow your bum to tilt up and lift off, you're going to find it very difficult to be able to squeeze your hamstrings. If you actually try it for yourself with your bum in the air, you can barely squeeze your hamstrings. So if your ass is coming up off that bench, you probably need to lower the weight or just concentrate a little bit more, okay? And when I'm doing this, you know, ideally you want to hold the contraction at the top, but as you can see here, I'm tiring a little bit, so my reps are a little bit faster than I probably like, but vary the tempo. And another thing I would say is that the direction of your feet will make a little bit of a difference as to the, the fibers which you're going to recruit within the hamstring. So if you point your feet outwards like that when you're doing the curl, you're going to recruit more of the outer hamstring, whereas if you point your feet inwards, you're gonna recruit more of the inner hamstrings. So, you know, I would vary it from time to time and experiment. Don't always use the same placement time and time again. Now, the next exercise we're going to is the seated hamstring curl. Now, the, the type of machine which you have at your gym is really gonna dictate how effective this exercise is. Personally, for me, I'm a big fan of this machine here, okay, where the handles are out in front of you because it allows you to really push your torso into that bench and lock yourself into position. With this one, I have to kind of pull myself down to keep myself locked into position, which is doable, but I feel much more locked in position when I'm pushing against the handles out in front of me. Now, when you're doing a light leg curl, your legs are relatively straight in relation to your torso, so you could argue that this body position causes more tension to be placed on the outer hamstring, or the biceps for more. However, in the seated leg curls, your legs are bent at the hips, usually around 90 degrees in relation to your torso. So you can argue that this is gonna recruit more of your inner hamstring. So it's good to do both. A few which missed the cut, like I said on the quad video, I'm a big fan of lunges, walking lunges, static lunges, Bulgarian split squat, okay? I do believe that these exercises are an absolute killer for the legs and they're very effective. But like I said before, they're not particularly dominant in either the hamstring or the quads. But I would say there's way to manipulate them as to target certain areas. If I was to take a wider stance, so my foot was further out in the lunge or the Bulgarian split squat, I'm gonna target more of my glutes and my hamstrings. But if I was to take a shorter step, I would be engaging much more of my quad. As you can see, my knee comes out a little bit in front of my foot. So you can manipulate these exercises a little bit to target different areas, but for me personally, I really do think that it's a full leg workout. Uh, every time I do lunges or Bulgarian split squats, I just I really do feel it in my ass, so that's particularly why I just didn't really categorize them into the quad video or the hamstring video. Now one more thing before I finish. When it comes to training hamstrings, and clients I've trained in the past, a lot of people have had issues when performing them and that they've been prevented from executing a lot of these exercises due to the lack of strength in the lower back. Now, this is probably because they just don't train the lower back enough or they're lifting too heavy. But what I say for you guys, if you are struggling to execute a lot of these exercises because your lower back is holding you back, 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 I would recommend on just working to strengthen it up, okay? Do exercises which is gonna help your lower back so that you can then perform a lot of these movements which are recruiting the entire posterior chain to your full potential, okay? That being said, I'm probably gonna have to do a video on how to strengthen your lower back, aren't I? Anyway, that's it for now. That's the hamstrings covered. 
They're the top five I would go for in my personal opinion. I'm not saying they're the best out there, they're the best five to do. Like I said, I would like you to mix it up from time to time, but those are the five very effective exercises which I will do on a regular basis. So, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you soon.